This rig is all about soft pellet fishing. Same again, a rig that's applicable for pretty much the whole year. There's no time that at some point at many venues you're going to catch on soft pellets. Probably one of the most popular methods up and down the country, if you like, for catching F1s and carp. And I want to make one for you right now in the way I do it. I do things. So I'm not going to talk about the shotting yet. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Float choice. That is the first thing, obviously, that we want to do. And I still want to be on something fairly nice. Yeah, I want to be on something that's still got a bit of sensitivity to it, something that is stable as well. That is the key thing when choosing your float for fishing soft pellets, is having a float that takes quite a bit of weight. Yeah, I don't want airy fairy rigs that up, go all over the place. It is all about stability. And the shot in and the float choice is going to be a big one for that. So, stepped up things a little bit from what I'd use, possibly during the winter months. Sometimes I'd use a finesse limb, just as a bit of a lighter bristle. It has a 1.5 mil bristle. I may use that for soft pellet fishing when it's really, really, really cold, maybe for skimmers as well. But for 10 months of the year, nine months of the year, depending on how warm it is, I want to step things up a little bit and I'm just going to simply use one of the carbon slims that are stepped up a bit. It just has a 1.8 mil hollow bristle. I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same as the finesse, uh, finesse slims, but we change the eye a little bit on these, have a bit of a stronger eye because we're going to be pulling a little bit harder, potentially using slightly uh, heavier main lines, although actually not in this case. And as I say, the biggest key point of it, it has a 1.8 mil bristle that just makes it a little bit easier to see. Probably distinguishes between liners and bites a little bit clearer. It's just for when there's loads of fish in your bag, for when the fishing is good. So that is the float we're going to be using this. And the one I'm going to make up for you now is a 0.5, because again, I want that stability. Yeah, and I want a fairly heavy float for the depths that I'm going to be fishing in. I mean, most of the rigs that I'm going to make for throughout this sort of series are going to be for fishing sort of three to five foot most of the time when I'm on the bottom, because that's what we fish in nine times out of 10. I mean, so again, that's what I'm fishing in. We're here at Western Pools. Most of the pools are quite shallow, so I'm going to make a rig that is for sort of a five foot in this case, a 0.5, absolutely perfect for that. And I'm going to stick to 16 main line as well. Yeah, I still want something that is robust that will let me catch loads of fish. Yeah, very similar to the maggot sort of style fishing where I might want light lines for a bit of a sexier um, presentation in the really cold months. I've still got to think about that durability that I need because I'm going to catch lots of fish. Yeah, so 016 for me, still five pound odd, does the job. So we're going to make our rig on that stuff today. So straight away, I'm going to whack the float on a piece of line, nice and quick with the, the power type eye that they have on these. And I'm going to trim that down because it's so much easier to put the silicon on with a cleanly cut piece of line sort of thing. Got my silicon cut ready. Same again, the black stuff, I mentioned this, the, the black 0.05 silicon that we do fits pretty much all the carbon stem floats within the slim and finesse range. Not so much the power ones, you've got to step up to the 0.7 for them, but with all the, the standard type floats, the nice sexy floats we call them, 0.5 does the job for me. And I like a black one, and I like it to be that low profile, something I've mentioned again, lots and lots. The lower the profile of the silicon on my float stem, the better my float works. The last thing I want is my silicon, big, thick, nasty silicon, holding my float flat on the water and having to tweak it. I want my silicon to not interfere with my float whatsoever. And I've got three pieces there. Yeah, same again, that black 0.5. I've cut two 5 mil pieces. 5 mil? Yeah, about 5, 6 mil. And one 10 mil piece for the bottom of my float. Now, big, big fan. Three pieces of silicon. Does the job for me on all standard type floats, if we like. So I'm going to whiz that on. I'm not going to tie any loops because that will damage my line or potentially damage my line. Putting this silicon onto my float. Don't bite that because it won't go through. Let's say two little pieces on first, big piece on last because that goes at the base of my float. Good to go. And then moisten the base of my float. Right, sorry to interrupt again, but of course it would not be a video without the chance of you lot winning something. And for this one, I want something really simple. All I want you to do is comment below with how many number eights I put on this float and you could win this exact rig that I have already made. So yes, whack the comments in there. Best luck to everyone and you can have a shiny new soft pellet fishing rig for your summer. Saying don't push it all the way up the float. I just want it at the base of the float. So you can tell as soon as you put that silicon on, it just goes on nice. It's not difficult to get on, which in turn will damage your line. It goes on, but it's still fairly snug. So my floats aren't going to move. It's not too loose that my float could move itself. Right, so the silicon on, all nice in place, nicely moistened. I'm going to slide that up. You can see with it being nice and wet, it doesn't damage your line whatsoever. And I get rid of any line that I may have damaged slightly by edging that silicon onto my float. So get rid of that little bit. 
and then I have a lovely, fresh, damage-free piece of line to get my rig going. So first step, as always, whack my loop on. So I want just a standard, nice, the big loop tyre that I use for everything. Whack him on. Snip him nice and flush. That's really, really important to get that, the tag end of that loop flush. Because I've seen it so many times on the underworld stuff that we do is your hook length catches on that little, if you can imagine there's a knot with a little tag end sticking off it, so often your hook length can catch over that little horrible tag end, it creates like a little V. Get rid of that, I want it as flush as possible without affecting the knot. And then I'm good for me shotting. Yeah, with this one, really, really simple. What I want is all big heavy shot. Yeah, really, really simple with that being a 0.5 float. I've had a test already, in my jar as always, it takes uh, seven number eight. Yeah, it's all about stability on this one. So I'm going to put seven number eight, not in any taper, just in a lovely spread out bulk. So I'm going to my first one on my hook length loop, actually on the loop that I'll talk about in a minute once I've got it on. And then above that, I'm just literally going to have a number eight at two inch intervals all the way up for them seven. So it'll be 14 inch, that's right in it. My whole shot, it'll be within 14 inch two inch intervals with those number eights and that'll create a lovely stable thing. But I'll get the shot on and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right, that one, shotted up, ready to go. And the first thing I wanna talk about, as I say, is me shot on me loop. Yeah, big, big thing for me. I do this so often now after seeing some of the footage on the underwater cameras that we did and how much your loop affects the fall of your bait. I mean, really, 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 really big thing for me, but also I don't like how my main line, sometimes when I'm using more robust main lines like 016, I want to try and close my loop up as much as possible so it's not sat there open that big, thick, robust main lines often do. It just helps close my loop and just creates a, a more fluent sort of rig and it keeps everything as tight as possible. So as I said, my first one there, if you lot can see that, if I hold him nice and still, is on my hook length loop. Yeah, I've still got plenty of room on that loop and you can see it's still open because I've just made it. I could easily get my hook length on that. I can still get my hook through that. I could still get a size 12 through that if I needed to, but by having it below that, um, the knot on my hook length loop, it stops my hook length getting caught over that little tag end that I was talking about, but also more than anything else, straightens my loop out. Yeah, it keeps everything exactly where I want it, makes them sink as sexy as possible. So, as I said, really, really simple. I did my maths wrong, of course, before. It's not 14 inch, it'd be 12 inch because my first shot is on zero, if you like. So you can see that one, and he's just above 12 inch. Oh, I've put that on, and really, really, really simple. Let me pull it away a bit so you lot can see it better. See, it's just two inch intervals. Yeah, but that's with the depth. Yeah, as I say, I'm making a rig here that I'm gonna use 0.5 flow. I'm gonna use it four to five and a half foot. Yeah, so having that sort of proportional of shot in, it'd be perfect for that. If I was gonna drop down to a smaller flow, and I may swap to number nines instead, so in that case it's a point four, a point 0.5, if I swap to a point 0.4 and use nines instead, what I'd do is I'd condense them shot a little bit more because I'd be using that float in three and a half foot maybe, and I may go to inch and a half increments in between my shots just to make a proportional with my rig. I mean, I'm pretty much looking for the bottom quarter, bottom third at a push from my rig. That's where all my shot it wants to be. So it's all nice, all condensed, keep my rig as stable as it possibly can. Say so it's big old shot, it's number eight, it's gonna keep it where I want it with that lovely curve happening. And that last shot, of course, being so big and so close to my hook. I mean, with this, I'm gonna have a three, or more than likely not, a four inch hook length again. Again, of whatever material is needed or whatever strength is needed, depending on the, the fishery, the type of fish, how many I'm catching, whatever. It's gonna be an 010, an 012, an 014. With a decent hook as well, really, really important. With this, I don't want super light gauge wire hooks for this. I mean, I say this rig, I'm using it for carp and F1s with a slightly heavier bristle. So I want like an MXC1 standard pellet type hook in a 16 with a bit of weight as well. I mean, the weight of the hook's a big thing for all incorporating that stability into the rig. That makes a massive, massive, massive difference and just make sure you're fishing pellets absolutely perfectly. So with that done, last thing I want to do is whiz it on my winder. And of course, this is a big owl rig, decent rig. Potentially, I'm going to use it in some deeper water with a big length of line on as well. So I'm gonna do a full 15 revolutions around my winder, and that's gonna create a lovely rig that is the whole of my matrix top kits. Fits things absolutely perfect. So again, I've spoken about this many, many times before, and that the pin that you use is so, so important in terms of winders. Make sure I've not tangled that. 
in that I always want to be using the keeper ring on my winders. I'm going to literally ram this down your throat on every single video because it is massive. The last thing you ever want to be doing is using the pins at the top end of your winders for storing your hook length loop. The one that accepts your hook length on at the bottom of your rig. That always needs to go on the keeper ring because it straightens your loop out. The last thing I want is a curly hook length loop that makes my rig an absolute mess and not a straight line at all when it's in the water. So by whizzing him on there, on the keeper ring, I've got my glasses on so I can't see a flipping thing. Here we go. And I'm going to do 15 on that pretty much. Um, two, three, four, five, six. Should I put my float on now? No, not, not yet. Let's give him a bit more. Seven, eight. Now I'm going to put my rig on. So it takes the full length of the wind of that one. So, 13, 14, 15, a little bit for good luck. And I know that that rig now is potentially seven and a bit foot long, the entire rig, probably a little bit longer. And it lets me fish it in whatever sort of depth I want up to that sensible sort of six foot while still leaving plenty of line above me float to get him a rig the right sort of length that I want it and that is it stick him on the slidey thing slidey storage thing get that tight and yet another rig for soft pellets ready good to go